Young update brings an intense new infantry-only game mode, along with a brand new map and improved spawn protection mechanics. Two new weapons and a batch of new weapon skins are now added to the arsenal. A fun new light transport vehicle appears on the front line. Camouflage skins are introduced for a selection of vehicles. The first-person experience now becomes even more immersive. An XP bonus is given for joining the underdog faction. More battlefields are added to the war map. And grounded paratroopers behind enemy lines can now become airborne again. The new Encounter game mode offers fast-paced, infantry-only battles. The goal is to capture and hold a single objective. And this game mode arrives with a brand new map to play on. The Depot Encounter map is a bloody struggle through trenches to take and hold a fortified train depot in the woods. The inside of the complex is characterized by intense close quarters combat for control of the building. Due to the compact size of the depot map, a new type of protected spawn area has been introduced. This new system also works on existing skirmish maps, and assault maps will be getting a similar system in a coming update. A new folding stock version of the M1 Carbine is now available for US paratroopers and tankers. It is a compact semi-automatic weapon which uses only four equipment points. The PPS Sarok 3 is a much requested submachine gun for the Soviet faction. It differs a bit from the PPD Sarok and the PPS Sarok Adin by having a smaller 35 round magazine. But with faster reload time and better damage over range, it is closer in handling to the Thompson or MP40. The German Sonderkraftfahrzeug 2, also known as the Kleines Kettenkraftrad HK101, or Kettenkrad for short, is here. It is a very useful and fast vehicle that eats rough terrain for breakfast. It is unlocked by the driver ribbon for infantry and recon, and it can also mount a supply crate as well. You can now acquire camouflage and skins for a selection of vehicles, and the first ones available are the Vasyugen light camo for the Soviet Gaz 67, the olive drab and black camo for the US 4x4 truck, the ambush DB camo for the German Kübelwagen Typ 82, the ambush DB camo, and the light olive skin for the new Kettenkrad. More will be added for other vehicles in future updates. Besides five new skins for the M1 folding stock and five more for the PPS, an additional Alder skin for the Gewehr 43 and an anodized black skin for the Tula Tokarev 33 are now available. And finally, the Soviet Mosin Nagant M. Divinastadin Tritsit can now be upgraded with one of the four new Patriot Field Camo skins. In the Young update, we're bringing an even more immersive and responsive first person experience to the action game. Camera shakes and new on screen effects are now triggered when in proximity of explosions or impacts and when you receive damage. The character movement and weapon handling system has been reworked, making the first-person experience more responsive and less interruptive. Sprinting costs less stamina and will always boost the running speed even when running uphill. Jumping no longer drains stamina, but you won't regenerate stamina while jumping. Your soldier can now also walk over minor obstacles without losing aim or the ability to fire. Entering and exiting prone is now faster, and maneuvering while prone is also smoother. Plus, you can now crawl under tables or through pipes. If you play war battles as part of one of the two least populated factions, you will now receive a rank experience bonus. The size of this underdog bonus will depend on how big the difference is between the faction populations. The bonuses we introduced in the Xulandor update for war battles resulted in a longer waiting time when the matchmaker tries to find a battle for you, as there is only a limited amount of battlefields in a war. Therefore, we have expanded the campaign map with more battlefields, especially at choke points in and around the Alps, and other locations where the three factions often clash. Grounded paratroopers dropped behind enemy lines can now become airborne again, provided they are able to take control of an airfield and receive transport planes as reinforcements by air. This now allows generals to perform more efficient and authentic airborne operations.